couple and said, did you hear that sound? They said, yes, it was this deer. There's a deer standing in front of them with his leg up in the air, looking across the trail, not at them, but down into the woods. And I said, no, deer don't make that sound. And just then the deer goes, "Ah!" <laughs> yes, deer do make that sound. And then I heard a call from down in the brush, Arr! an answer back. And the first deer stops being worried, goes back to browsing again. That was, where are you? I am here. Didn't know they did that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Driving Skyline Drive at night. Wildlife comes out, different wildlife than during the day sometimes, but you get to see wildlife if you're careful. You drive a little slower than normal because it's dark and you have your headlights on. And I'm driving that one night at 30 miles an hour looking for wildlife. And all of a sudden I look at my open right hand side window and there is a barred owl flying 30 miles an hour right alongside my window. And just about the time I realized he was there, he starts drifting toward my open window and I didn't want an owl in my car. <laughs> so I slammed on the brakes and the owl went up into the trees. A couple nights later, I was driving a same stretch of road with another ranger in the car. Later, it was 10.30 at night. And we saw an owl fly down into the ditch in front of her headlights, grab a mouse, and take off with dinner. That owl had learned to hunt by headlights. Now, owls have really good night vision. They don't need headlights. <laughs> they can hunt by starlight. That's adequate. But this owl had figured out that the mice <laughs> get nervous when the headlights are coming. And the nice mo mouse moves, and it has eye shine. And that owl had learned that's an easier way to hunt. <laughs> wow. I didn't know they did that. <laughs> Out here in the meadow, I like to take pictures, I'm a photographer, of the white-tailed deer and their fawns early in the season. And uh, I use a long telephoto lens so I can stay far enough away that I don't change the behavior of the animals because I'm there. And that's the way you want to photograph wildlife, far enough away that they don't care that you're there. And I had my camera set up and I was watching this one doe and a fawn who were never coming close enough together. So I get that, 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 that wonderful shot. And all of a sudden I hear a sound. I've not been cows in that meadow for 30 since 1930s. And I look over and here comes a doe, female deer, moving quickly, stiff legged, a head down low in an aggressive posture straight towards the first deer, the first doe. And that first doe looks up and hears that moo again, takes off running. The second doe comes over, stops, the fawn comes over and starts nursing. Oh, that's not your fawn, that's my fawn. Didn't know they did that. That's a complete contrast to this next story.